If you're looking at the title of this video, you're probably wondering, is it impossible to have Federer's racket? Well, yes and no. I've come to a pretty important segue, and we're gonna work backwards. I'm gonna just show you everything I did to get here. So I realized where we left off in the last video might have been a little bit disappointing. So as you can see, I've strung this racket up. Um, this is using the original grommets. I also put the leather grip on here. I put some weight uh, at the seven inch mark, and I put some weight under the bumper and some weight here as well because the specs came out lower than I had anticipated. And fortunately, from just from playing with the racket, I can tell it definitely has a low, low twist weight. The racket played amazing. The MGRI value is definitely not up to where I would ideally be for matching a Federer spec, but otherwise the racket has about a 350 swing weight, um, a 30.9 balance point, which is really low. The thing is with the, these grommets, they say on the sale page is that they're not very good. And as you can see, maybe uh, there's like some damage already happening to the grommet. So I only gave it a quick light hit, just hit a couple balls against the wall, uh, hit it with the ball machine a little bit and on practice some serves. And I really like the way it hits. It feels awesome. These strings, especially, I used a Weiss Cannon Explosive and Weiss Cannon Silver String. Or v and so what you see here, these are the extra cuttings from the half sets. And I use these to mass out how much string uh, is left over from the 20 foot in length so that I can estimate what the string bed weight will be with full natural gut. Um, I obviously don't want to put natural gut in here with grommets that I have to replace. The big thing was that I was waiting for these Wilson grommets because Tennis Warehouse locally doesn't have any, Tennis Express doesn't have any. So on eBay they came in actually two days early which is awesome. The big thing is that these grommets are going to weigh more uh, than these grommets definitely because I, I inspected them and they, they're really flimsy like this one, the bumper up here felt really really floppy. Um, so right now I'm going to cut this out, probably going to cut ahead, you're probably not going to see much of this. And uh, then I'll put these ones back in. Once I cut out the strings, I'll remeasure the grommets and then that way I can get an estimation for how much weight I might need to add and how much weight is actually being added to the string bed so I'm not going over too high on the swing weight. And that way we can get the static weight in line. I'll be keeping track of how close I got just uh, just to keep myself on my toes to make sure that I'm having a good sense of what's going on. So now first we'll just uh, re-measure the stick without any strings on it with all the weight added just to get a ballpark number here. So 351. I have a ton of notes on the table. Uh, I might not point them out specifically but I'll try to explain as we go. My estimation was about 14 points five grams for the string bed as it was and what i'm finding on the scale right now is it was about a loss of 15 grams which means that my calculations are uh, pretty ballpark accurate next what i'm going to do here is pretty straightforward i'm just going to mass the grommets just to see how much of a difference we have i don't know how well you can see it but they're actually like almost identical i really can't find any difference other than some casting flaws in the knockoff one and then it looks like there's a different sort of pattern. I'm definitely going to be using the Wilson one. So uh, you last saw it, I was able to get the weight under here. It's a little, there's gonna be a little bit of bulging probably on the corners. Um, I've taken five grams out of the handle at the seven inch location. This is the tape that I was using there. You can see that's 4.92 grams. And then, so we should have a 346 weight. We'll see how much of that I can actually get back here. Uh, if I don't get enough back, I'm going to put a little bit more back in the handle, of course, so we can have that 364 gram stay consistent. So next is to actually string the racket. So after being strung up, this racket came in right where we wanted. Right now it doesn't have the trap door on it. So it's not gonna, it's gonna be a little bit low. But it's actually right where we want it. It's gonna add another gram because we don't have this trap door. And why we don't have that on will become apparent in a second. But even with the trap door missing, the balance is way too low. And of course we're coming up short of 31.5 
centimeter balance point, and that's not cool. And the reason why this is happening is also the same reason why I think this racket may actually have come from some sort of a legitimate racket manufacturer. If you look inside here, there is a weight stuck between the two tubes that make up this whole frame. So as you take a look inside, hopefully you will see that there is a bulge, uh, no pun intended, right about here. Fortunately, it's sandwiched between these in such a way that I can't just cut it with a hacksaw blade or any other sort of blade that I would like to use. So I'm going to have to get a little bit creative to remove that weight. Problem is the balance point because Feder's balance point is because Fed's balance point that we're looking for is the lowest I've seen is 31.8 but I've seen with Fab Fed his rackets several rackets he was between 32.1 and 32.4 we were getting about 31.3 max uh, even with a really high swing weight like a higher swing weight than we would want in order to get that balance point up we had two options Add more weight to the tip, which would bring it way, way, way too high out of spec 360 plus swing weight. And we're looking for 353 to 355. That would just bring the swing weight way up too high. And that's not something we can do. Our next option is to take weight out of the handle. However, when we take, however, the problem that we encounter when we take weight out of the handle, especially if it's not in the right location, like, like let's say we switch to a higher, a lighter grip, then we're going to be taking a lot of mass out of the roughly five inch location. That's roughly the average or whatever the midpoint of the handle is. That's roughly where we're going to be taking most of the weight out. And we don't really want to do that. What we really need to do is take weight out of the bottom of the handle. And this is really the crux of where the difference is between Fetter's racket and what we get. Retail rackets have weight added to their handle. So let me show you on this Yonix. This is a legit Yonix. So you can see it's not really sticking and there it sticks to the handle there. It's a neodymium magnet. It's not going to stick from this side because they put it in between the frame. Because there's basically a tube that runs. This is just one tube of the racket and they kind of have a conjoining piece here. And then the, two, the tube comes all the way around and the two pieces, well it's one tube, but two pieces come together in the handle. And then in between those two pieces, they're going to slide a piece of metal in the, in the mold, and then they're going to glue it all together. So when P1, etc. says that Federer and whoever has a custom handle or grip, that's going to be probably a big part of it, is not having the weight down here. Because as we know from MGRI stuff, um, that's going to have a big impact on how the racket comes around. So if instead of having weight down here, they'll have it inside here with the metal. This is not something I would expect a normal recreational racket modification person to do this. But this is just to demonstrate just how difficult it is to create a Roger Federer spec out of what would be essentially, this is probably very similar to a retail frame. Now after hours and hours of cutting and bounding and pounding and whatever, basically we were victorious and it didn't come at a cheap cost. I could feel the racket handle actually break a little bit right in here when I was removing it because that's where the weight was roughly located, right about here. Now I don't have that inner beam, which is not only conjoining the two sides of the of the loop together, but it's also going to give a really strong beam in the middle. So I'll add probably structural stuff later, maybe some foam, maybe some wood, we'll see. Um, I haven't really gotten to that stage, I wanted to record this. These three little pieces of metal don't really look like that much, but in fact it's actually quite a lot of weight. Um, and this would explain why it has a such a ridiculously low balance point. We're talking about nearly an ounce, that's 22 grams in the handle. So now this racket, it doesn't have the trap door on it, which is an extra gram, 
And the bucket get, did get damaged as well a little bit, but nothing too bad. Nothing that isn't repairable or replaceable or really all that big of a deal. But now we have a racket that's 335 grams. And that's a huge difference. Now there's still weight in the handle, but it's more up here, closer to, closer to that seven inch mark. So I'm really not willing to go down that far. And I want to do this with hand tools because I want it to be a representation of what an average person might actually be able to do. And so first I drilled out the that kind of wedge between in the handle and then I uh, sawed away at it and then I drilled at it some more and then I used a heating element to help heat things up uh, just try to help push it out of the way and then eventually you'll see I got a pneumatic tool and I started cutting away at this to help kind of create some space so that I could actually grip something and um, that was actually exactly what, what needed to happen because from there it was lined up like this so from there once I had these kind of grooves in it uh, I kept drilling with different drill bit sizes and then I knew that once this thing came loose a little bit from drilling it, it was able to grip it because the wedges allowed for slightly different peaks and valleys and the, the drill actually was able to grab one of these pieces and kind of loosen it like that. And from, from there I knew I was basically home free. I basically hammered in there with a chisel and able to get this kind of wedged open like that and just grabbed it really hard with some uh, needle nose pliers and just went to town twisting it around and here we go. That's not going to be something anyone could do. That's not something I recommend. That's definitely going to absolutely wreck your warranty. That's definitely going to damage the racket. That's definitely not a reversible modification. However, it's going to be very good for us trying to achieve better spec here. This is a piece of uh, inch wide lead tape that weighs roughly five grams. So we can just see that we are basically there once we add the butt cap in, it's gonna be C364. So now we're gonna stick it on the measuring board just to demonstrate how now suddenly this, this spec is actually totally achievable. Let's see if we get a better angle here. It's kind of teetering a little bit, but we're now suddenly right above that 32 centimeter balance point. And that's what we were looking for. Um, it's kind of hard to do this while I'm filming. But you'll have to take my word for it that it's about that 32 centimeter balance point, maybe 32.1, maybe 32.2, maybe 32, 32.0. But just demonstrating, just moving this weight that was actually in the racket with a little bit of extra weight, that it is actually achievable. But this is just to show you that the manufacturing differences between what Federer uses and what we are using is absolutely different. So even though the layup might be the same, even though the drill pattern might be the same, Stuff like this is really hard to change. And I would argue makes it a different racket. Because if you look at the Pro Staff 97 and the RF 97A, what's the difference between the two? Just a little bit of weight in the hoop and a little bit of weight in the handle. So hopefully that covers a couple things. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you can see just how hard it is to achieve the specification. Just keep that in mind. This is not gonna be something you're gonna be able to easily to replicate. However, that being said, even leaving these in, the racket played very well. The MGRI value just wasn't where we would want it to recreate Roger Federer's spec. Some time, I I'm, haven't been doing so well health-wise. I need to kind of get uh, a little bit better here before I can start playing again. Uh, I take some time off, but uh, I'll be working on the review video. And in the meantime, we'll have a couple of informational videos about swing weight, how it impacts arm comfort and spin and control all together. Um, I know I didn't show too much about the lead tape and taping stuff, but honestly, that's really simple, really straightforward. It's all about cutting at the right length, make, making sure you double check your weights, measurements before and after, and then measuring your swing weight uh, using that tennis warehouse DIY technique.